think United are scoring. And it's exactly the point that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer chose to make in a pre-match press conference. He said, look, we have to spend money to compete. I mean, this lays it bare. In the two games they've played out there, they've created 33 chances. They scored two penalties. Yeah, it does, you know, but I, 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 I can't go on it. I still think, when you look at what United have done in the last six months, with that top three, you know, they've competed with Liverpool's top three, scored more goals than Liverpool's top three, made the City's top three. These are clear-cut chances that we've been talking about. These are chances from four or five yards. Um, if Sancho's there, does he score? I don't know. But Sancho's not an out-and-out -out striker. You know, there's no excuse for what we've seen today. United you know, in a way, deserve to win. As Goldie said, they were, you know, exhilarating in, in the first 15 minutes of the second half. And I said to you before, it's about being ruthless. It's about taking the chances when they come. They could have been three or four and up, and the game was dead and buried. Credit to Seville, they're hanging there, rode the luck, and nicked it at the end. But, you know, if I'm sitting there as a player in that change room now, I'm absolutely devastated because that's a game that we should have won within 60 minutes of the game. We, we must say as well, Jack, that keeper was brilliant. Yeah. Mm. He made, I know <laughs> you, you can argue about the finish and coach you can, but at times he, he made some really good saves, so especially one-on-one, -on -one, I thought it was brilliant. Definitely. Yeah, Bono had the edge over United, Owen, let's <laughs> come to you. The lads in here are both making the point that really United had the opportunities, they didn't take them. Sevilla doing what they do so well in this competition. How do you reflect on that frustrating 90 minutes of football? Yeah, I think frustration really would be the end thing for United and, and the fans and the players. I, I'm with Scalzi. I thought they played pretty good. Uh, goalkeeper had a worldie <laughs> again. Um, United, you know, had some finishing moments where they, they just didn't take. And I thought Sevilla showed some real real character, really, to defend and throw bodies in front of challenges. Uh, that, that spell, I thought, for the 10 or 15 minutes at the start of the second half, I thought Man United were unbelievable. You know, dominated possession. Even though Sevilla had more in the game, that looked, that was class. And they just needed to to take the chances, as Inzi said, they didn't. And uh, I think Sevilla started to grow more in confidence. And again, you know, we saw with Pep, he spoke about both boxes. Raheem certainly missed his chance to concede on the other end. You know, United don't take their chances. A bit of lax marking from Lindelof. And they concede a goal when it did look like they concede. So I think disappointment really for United. But I think all in all, they've had a good season. But to lose three semifinals is, um, they got to work on that. You know, you can't lose three semifinals in one season. Yeah, I agree with all that. As much as United deserve to win and played really good football at times, they were the better team. There's no doubt about it, they're the better team. You have to say the second goal, the defensive part of that goal was, was shocking. Lindelof and Maguire both out past the near post. There's one centre forward, Lindelof has to see him. And then he, Juan Bazaka as well has to try and cover for him if, if he don't think he sees him. But surely Lindelof as a centre half. He's got his centre forward, he's got to be looking at, looking at him, his body angle's all wrong. And if they, if they avoid that, then I, I think they will go and score a goal, because Sevilla looked naff they, they looked tired to me. Yeah. They didn't look like they were going to create a chance other than that one. That well, one we saw did. what Bruno Fernandes thought of that defending. Um, is it quality? Is it spending money? Is it still a good season for Manchester United? What does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer think? All of that is still to come. We're going to stay exactly where we are. We're going to get some reaction from out in Germany as well. But let me just remind you, not only is the other semi-final in the Europa League coming your way tomorrow evening, we've also got both the semi-finals from the Champions League as well. Leipzig up against Paris Saint-Germain Tuesday from 7 o'clock. Lyon against that brilliant Bayern Munich team Wednesday evening at 7. Both of them here on BT Sport 1 and BT Sport Ultimate. Then later. You're right, mate. Yeah, good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was all too much for you for a second. Look, during the, during the ad break, all three of you were busy talking about the goal that won it for Sevilla. Let's just do that on air, I suppose, for people at home to hear the conversation you were having. Who wants to kick us off? It's goals you can. You seem quite irate about it, so... I think we are, weren't we? Yeah. Look, there's, a, there's a lot wrong with the goal. You, you can almost blame the full back, back four for this goal. Mm. Firstly, Williams doesn't get to the ball. Where, where Maguire is, I'm not too sure. He has to drop in, surely. Um, Lindelof, he's the man with the centre. I know one percent I can see him now, but Lindelof I had a look there. He dropped, he looks at his man, he's got to defend the middle of his goals. He's, he's the centre half. Yes. He has got to defend. It, I you, I get he's that. passed his front yeah, post. I, I, get, I get that, I get that. Both two centre halves are passed up there, but one Pazaka can see that the back of Lindros number, so he knows he can't... Let's get the right. cross in. Lindelof, body, body angle is all right. It's completely he wrong. It's cre but Wambasaka as a full-back has got to be coming inside the striker anyway, so he's in line with him. What he does, once, once Luke Dion Ooh. scored, look where Wambasaka is now. He's not even gone with him. He's not even stayed I, with him. Look, look I, I agree. He's a little bit at fault. I'd say 
Probably in 25%, Lindelof 75%. Lindelof, uh, when, he, when Lindelof's running back in, he had a quick look at him. He had a quick look at him, so he knew exactly where he was. But then he puts his head down and doesn't look, and by that time, it's too late. If I'm a fullback, and I've played a fullback a few times for United, and my centre half can't see where his man is, and, I, and he's standing right in front of me, the first thing I'm doing is staying with him. I know, I'm not, not exactly away the same, but he, how, how can your centre half not see where your centre forward oh, it's is? It's error after error. Yeah, right. exactly. So, so, yeah, so it's error. that you can sure. blame the full back four. But for me, Lindelof is, yeah. is the biggest problem. He looks twice. He, look, 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 Scobbs, you watch it, look. It looks again now. Yeah, that, that's, that's that look. Then he gets caught square. Yeah. Now you can't see him. Yeah. And he, he has to drop into the mm. six-yard line, and at least he's facing him then. But one per second can. Look, look at one per second. He's, he's at probably half a yard away from Luke de Jong. Yeah, well, one per second. He, he has... He, always, he almost has to anticipate no. that his centre-half is going to make a mistake. But he can't, and, he and that's can't, what good defenders ball. do, don't get me wrong. Mm. But... Lindelof for me. And Maguire, well, where is Maguire? Mm. Well, where's your, well, what's he doing? There's nobody there. It's, it's one person against three. And that one person... And do you know what? It's a good ball in, yeah. but ter terrible defending. But you've got to block crosses. You know, we talk about full-backs, yeah. you know, block crosses. You know where Navis is going to go. He's all right foot. <laughs> That's why we, we've said all four. It's block all four cross. of them yeah. against, one per against two people. You've got to block the cross. I, mean, I know it's hard when you're at home and you're not in the studio. What do you think? You know what? They're all right. Bruno <laughs> Fernandes is right. Scholes is right. Ninti are right. Ev everybody's involved in it. Brandon Williams needs to stop the cross. If we, if we go back to the goal there, when the ball goes wide to Brandon Williams, and we can just pause it real quick, it's actually 4v2. There's no danger. It's 4v2. You know, so basically, you don't, there, sh there shouldn't be any problem there. If you pause it there, it's 4v2. And, and Scholes is right. Maguire's not marking anyone. He's crossing. He needs to be inside his goal, basically. In Lindelhoff, that's where they should be. They're not. Wambi Saka does well to compensate because he realizes they're in trouble. Lindelhoff's got to check his shoulder. He needs to be two yards deeper. But I agree with Inzi in the fact that once Wambi Saka, he can see the whole thing. He knows Lindelhoff's in trouble. The ball is fabulous. The finish is fabulous. But when you're a team, you have to cover people's mistakes. And Bruno Fernandes is right because he knows. That decided, that changed them winning uh, potentially European titles. So frustration on behalf of the players because they care. But if they want to win a European title, they've got to take the chances. And you can't concede a goal when it's 4v2 at the back. You can't. Scores is right. Everybody's involved in that goal. And I think all they'll just be disappointed that they didn't deal with it. So much talk about Jaden Sancho. Paul, you mentioned Jaden Sancho bang on the full time whistle. Do any of you think, though, that defensive reinforcements are the single most important thing this United team needs? I think they could do with centre half. I've said that all along. Um, I'm not sure Lindelof's going to be good enough for a, a partner as Maguire. I think they need a more dominant um, defender next to him. I think defensively, the fullbacks are okay on the ball. You'd have to question. But I think defensively, they're okay. Um, so, yeah, look, uh, Lindelof's all right. And do you know what? The defensive record over the last. 15, 20 games, whatever it been, has been, been very good. Probably one of the best mm. in the league. So you have to say that into respect as well. But I still think a dominant centre-half next to Maguire just to cover for the, the slight weaknesses he has. Yeah, and you mentioned that word again and you talk about that word weaknesses, you know, and you always know whether you play Bayern now or Lindelof. They're always kind of prone to these kind of weaknesses. If that was Liverpool, that wouldn't have happened tonight. You know, it wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? That wouldn't have happened. From a quality perspective. From, from a defensive point of view, we kind of think about... Well, the forwards would have scored as well. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. But we kind of always think about it's all about offensive plan X, Y and Z. You know, not, not a lot of managers do a lot of defensive play and how you should be from there. And Scholes is right. Two centre oh, should never go past the near post. Ramasaka has to deal with it. Mm. Well, whatever happened, well, he has to deal with it. You know, if, if that had been going there, well, you would have dealt with that. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. Um, but they are short. Williams is still young, got a lot to them, but I like him. Ramasaka. Offensively, does he go forward enough? Does he create enough? Is he the modern day fullback? He's more of a defensive one. Um, what did Fred do in the games again today? When you see much of him, Pogba is that right position against him, holding alongside Fred, doesn't suit him. How many times did he get in the box? You know, we saw Pogba a year ago scoring goals. Mm. Didn't even see him in the box tonight. You know, so there's a lot of questions, you know, to be answered in that squad. Yeah, do, do you know what? I, I think the defensive and giving the goals away is a little bit irrelevant you, when you look at the chances United created. Yeah. So well. It's hard again to say so wastefully in front of goal, but the keeper was brilliant. You, you think the game the other night as well? The keeper was brilliant. I, I know, and that, that's why you have to you have to go that extra mile or pay that extra money for a top class centre forward, a top class wide player who win who win your game of football. 
wins your game of games of football. Do you think that's required then? Because we've spent the last two mm. games ahead well, of these matches does, talking does about that, that dynamic so? front three. Well, They're I, not scoring I, a goal from open I play. Think, I, think, I think these front three are brilliant. Yeah. They're, they're really, really good. Are they that real top level where you're going to go on to win leagues, to win trophies? I are think, they? I don't know. They've got, they've got that to prove. But I think... When you look at the stats the last two games, you just said there are 33 chances, two penalties. Mm. That tells you, in talking semi-finals, quarter-finals, where Paul said bef be before the game he needs seven, eight out of ten yeah. to, to win these games. Centre-forwards, when they get chances like that to get the seven, eight out of ten, they need to win your games of football. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's talk about life at the other end of the pitch. Uh, Harry Maguire is with Daryl. Let's get his reflections on this defeat for Manchester United. Harry, you've only just come out of the dressing room. How, how hard is that to take? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, the boys are devastated in there. Um, created numerous amounts of chances. Got to win the game. The best team lost and they've punished us for missing the chances. Um, we've been ruthless at times this year um, and today we wasn't. It was such a good start to the game as well. An another penalty scored. Why did you feel that you let them back into it. What went wrong back there? Um, maybe we took the... We took we started with a high press, we scored, and then we maybe let them out a, a bit too easy and had a, a little bit too much possession for our liking. Um, they didn't create many chances, if, if we're being honest. Uh, it's a ball in the box. Obviously, they've worked it well down down our right. We've got to do better. We'll look at it and we, we've got to improve. Conceded from two crosses, it's, it's not good enough. Um, but we worked our socks off out there. We we deserve to win the game. We deserve to go through. Um, but ultimately, we fell short at semi-final the third time this year. So it's disappointing. After their second goal, it did look like there was a bit of an inquest out in the pitch, a bit of an argument going on. Is it understandable? Tensions were that high at that moment? Well, for sure. It means a lot to us. Uh, the boys in there are devastated. We've got a good group of lads. Uh, we know what it means to play for this club. Losing isn't acceptable. Getting to semi-finals isn't acceptable. Um, we've got to now really concentrate and taking that, taking it further, taking um, another step. The improvement we've made this year is is massive. Um, you're probably seeing again tonight. We we played a good good Seville team and we've dominated the game. We on another day we win the game comfortably and everyone goes on about how well we've played. Um, there's areas where we can improve. We know that. Um, we need to get better. Uh, like I said, losing isn't acceptable for this club. Uh, we've, we've finished third in the Premier League and people will say it's a good season, but do we want to finish third next season? No, for sure. A lot of people did say that this United team had to win silverware to prove that they were developing, regardless, as you've just said. there. Obviously, I feel your disappointment, but, but do you agree with them in some ways? It has to happen sooner rather than later. It's been too long. Well, for sure, it will happen soon, so... Yeah, obviously we want to win as soon as possible. Um, you've seen the talent on the pitch, um, the way that we've improved throughout the season. If we take another giant step next season, then uh, we'll improve again. But um, no, it's disappointing. We, we want to win silverware. We've got to, t to three semi-finals. Um, obviously, against in the Carabao Cup, it was disappointing to lose the game. And in the FA Cup, we didn't turn up. Tonight, we've, we've turned up. We deserve to win the game. The best team's lost. And... Maybe that little bit of inexperience has cost us in the end because even though that we're on top and we're creating chances, we, we shouldn't concede the second goal. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you.